Welcome back to the channel guys. This video is going to be similar to the last one where we're going to have a, a few evenings work here and we're going to just update you guys with little bits and bobs that we've been doing. So Jamie's finished off the labelling on our lovely organised drill box area which we started in the last video. So I've just, I'm really pleased about it so I need to show you guys. I know it's sad but hey. Um, the bulkhead is going to get stripped apart and then cleaned up and make, make it fit a bit better um, so the bolts come e out easily and in easily um, and then I think Jamie's going to start doing that and then I'm going to start putting together a lower arm template so I'm going to have a little bit of a tacking session and tack it onto the car and uh, we'll check back in when we've done that. So a little update for you guys, uh, came in the night and took the headboard off the trailer and then we made up a, um, a winch bracket mount thing, you can't see it because I've already sent it off to the powder coaters yesterday. Um, so they've got that, they're going to powder coat that and then you'll see a lovely thing, it bent up on the tube bender, basically a tube going from there across the plate on top and then a couple of legs going forward to all those bolt plates. So it's really pretty. Um, I've had a little bit of a brain session going on in regards to the lower arm. So basically, my concern was, and I hope this makes sense, but obviously this is a dual layer jobby, whether that makes sense, I don't know. Um, so you'll have another sheet identical to this on top and then like bar welded in inside to make almost like a, a sandwich for, the, for a lower arm. These two bosses will be like that and like that. And they are what the rose joints, heim joints, whatever you want to call them, will go into. And then that attaches to the car. Um, a little bit of an issue in my brain, which is not unusual, of if I just weld that on there and weld that on there, happy days, I've got somewhere where the rose joints can go on. But as soon as I want to adjust for tracking or anything like that, if I wind one of these out and it's a little bit off by however many degrees, one degree, two degrees, whatever, the distance between the rose joints will change, which will put obviously stress on the actual brackets that are on the car and stress on the rose joints, etc., etc. So these two bosses have got to be exactly parallel to each other. How do you do that? Um, my original thought was to to turn, I've done it before on something actually, I can't remember what it was though, to turn a piece of bar so it just fits in there. You could get a really long M16 bolt, but we all know that the threads here and the threads in there are not perfectly the same size. Because if they were, you would never be able to wind it in and wind it out. You'll always have a little bit of wibbly wobbly in there because it is designed to wind in and out. So that won't work, you can't just put a long bolt in there because it's got a level of play at this sort of length. So my idea was to measure the inside diameter, tear down a bit of bar on the lathe so it just perfectly fits in there, do the same over there, and then either tack them together with a couple of cross braces to then have almost like a parallel frame that you can use to mock it up. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. It's, I'm probably going to actually weld the brackets onto the car itself and then simply fit the rose joints into the brackets and then use the brackets on the car to hold these in the correct orientation. Because then once these are in the right place, I then use this as a template on the other side of the car to mount the brackets on the opposite side. So then even if they're out a tiny bit, they're both out the same amount. That's kind of what I'm going to go with. I don't know. I don't really know if it's going to work. It's probably got massive problems that it's going to cause me, but that's what I'm going to try and do. And uh, so yeah, that's kind of the plan. We'll go from there. So first little stumbling block that I've come across, um, which obviously it's entirely my fault, because I have not planned anything, is that my engine mount is where I want to put my little weld on tabs over there, um, which kind of sucks. Um, 
but and I thought oh maybe the other side's better the other side I don't think I could have planned it any worse if I just turn this round <laughs> the other side they both land exactly on where the um, engine mounts are oh what have I done so that kind of sucks I've also not got any 16 mil bolts so I'm having to use a 16 mil <laughs> rose joint as the as the, the assembly bolt um, my original plan was to like to kind of have these I don't know if you can see from the side like angled up almost just to like like that you've got a chance of it catching on something on the ground if you've got your ass on the floor so I thought if I mount them up like that that will give me just a little bit extra clearance the arm will be a little bit higher which will make it a little bit closer to the center of the the drive line so you're, you're in and out on your um obviously because these let me walk around here these are designed to go in and out hang on i can't make it do it let me do it that, can you see that they're designed to go in and out of there um for when the arm's traveling up and down so the closer that you have the closer that you have the center line of your lower arm the less the less in and out the drive shaft will go and that's where if you've obviously put, if you put a lot of torque through something and trying to then slide it in and out on splines that's when you can break something so the the, the small amount of moving in and out you can get the better um so that was the idea was to try and get it you know up a little bit higher just to, to get it closer to the center line and that's not going to work because where i want it to be higher is where that is and then where that is and that one's even more you can see these are lent over yeah one's lent over and then one the other one's lent over a lot um that's not going to work so they're going to have to be like that um but it still doesn't feel like that so i'm gonna have to notch the top of them out on this side and the same again on that side it doesn't fit on the to the tube at the angle so i've basically just created a lot more work for myself by not thinking at all but hey that's half the fun isn't it so i'm going to try and have a little play on this side this is the easier side because that one i'm miles away from it and it's only that one there i've got to worry about um, but we'll try and shape the brackets and see if we can get an arm tacked on that'd be nice so um it's about 15 minutes later and we have a arm on a thing obviously ignore the fact that i've used rose joints as bolts but i don't have any m16 bolts at the moment um but they are tacked on and the arm does a droopy thing and it's kind of really really spot on to where it wants to be must be a little bit longer but these threads are all the way in so all you need to do is wind them out a little bit and it's pretty much where it wants to be so i'm kind of really happy about that obviously i had to just take the tip off of one of the one of the little brackets there just to clear that tube for the engine mount that i've put in the wrong place but hey it's uh it is what it is so um now i've got to work out how to attach this end um which should be fun so we'll give it a crack well oh, hang on i've got smudges yeah it's all smudged welcome to evening three uh, a little bit of progress for you so we'll go for a little update we have finished off i think i got some clips of me bending this up on the bender um so finished off the winch mount for the trailer and got it powder coated in metallic gray by the looks of it which is kind of cool kind of matches the galve i could have got it galved but that would involve drilling holes in it and waiting two weeks but it's done it's fitted um just gonna send it off and someone else will do all the wiring so that well if, if let's be honest if we did the wiring they'd probably catch a fire so um yeah that's a job down which is kind of cool so it looks kind of nice a bit more slick um nice bit of bending on there nice tubular jobby not the best welds but it was late um and the other night i was down here and we finished off the arm well the getting the arm i'll turn the old light up 
So we are now going to spend the evening trying to work out how to attach this piece to this piece. Um, so we'll think up some way of doing it and then we'll come back to you and let you know how we got on. The arm is too short, uh, which is fine because that's what the kind of the trial arm is for, is to make sure we're not making a whole arm for no reason. Um, we have cut a notch down the bottom there just to give clearance for this knuckle to drop down into it. Conveniently, the old, the M14 bushings that they accidentally sent us for the rose joints are really handy because the bolt that goes through the lower arm is an M14. So we love one in the lathe because I've got four and I only need two for the, with a thread in. I only need two bosses to actually hold the other end of the bolt. So I drilled them out in the lathe and then the two with a thread in is what the bolt's going to wind into. You'll kind of see that later on when we get to that stage in later videos. Um, so the car now is like touching the ground. Obviously it's the complete wrong wheel, wrong stud pattern, wrong size, wrong tire, but um, my mate Kev, I sent him a picture of this the other day and he was like, does the, uh, does the arm clear the wheel? And I was like, do you know what? I didn't even think about that, um, but it does, which is nice. So um, that's kind of a bonus. Um, the shame he lifts up the wheel a minute, you'll kind of see what we had a little problem with. So in the, if you hold it in the middle, Jamie, come down, yeah. yeah. So we, I thought with my stupid brain that this, obviously this goes in and out because as, you, as your wheel goes up and down, the dry shaft changes length. So this, this piece here goes in and out to accommodate for that, as demonstrated there. So I thought that that should be all the way in when it's in this position. So then when it goes down, it gets longer. And when it goes up, it gets longer again. Fine, yeah, makes sense. It doesn't need to be all the way in because if it's all the way in and the wheel goes down, this shaft hits on the cup and it limits your travel, which sucks. So it meant that the travel was hardly anything at all. So we've come, we've basically wound the rose joints all the way out on this set on this template jig here to give us an extra, I don't want to say, because we had them halfway out. So it's probably, this has probably come out 20 mil. The shaft has come out 20 mil from the cup, um, which is about right. So now when it drops down to the floor, we actually get a correct amount of travel. Now it doesn't look a lot and I'm kind of questioned, I was questioning myself as to whether that is enough travel or not enough travel, but enough ground clearance even the drive shaft looks like it's gonna, it's gonna snap like a twig because of the angle it's at. So we're kind of gonna leave it as it is. I did do some measuring on, obviously the old man's got a class eight, um, beetle based on the back end here. And I did measure from his, his skid plate here to the floor and just sat here with with his normal weight with no driver or passenger in it's about 250 mil to the floor he's got you know you've gone as high as you can on the torsion arms and extra helper springs and all that sort of stuff on that to get it as high as possible what did we measure it as uh, it was 330. yeah 330 mil to the bottom of the arm there so i have got more ground clearance Obviously this will settle when you put weight in it, but we're gonna put adjustable gas coilovers on so that we can adjust the weight. So once we've loaded the car up with spares, radiator, fuel tank, battery, spare wheels, all that sort of stuff, we can then pressurize the shocks to get it to the crack ride height. That's the plan anyway. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a bit of a headache. I need to, when I redraw these, I need to add 35 mil onto this part to make the arms a bit longer, but that's why we did just the one layer of arm so that it's a template and we can actually work off of it. Um, the next stage pretty much is to start doing some roll cage because I need a top arm to attach to something. I've got nothing here at all. So I need to, to actually get my head together and pull out my ass and start building a roll cage and probably chop this bit here off because it's in the way and just start doing a cage. So I've got to save some money now and then start building a cage. So uh, 
we'll get you on a ride with that one. Well, thanks for staying by, guys. If you stuck to the end, well done. Um, it's really, really boring, but hey, that's building cars. Sometimes it's boring, sometimes it's not. Um, please subscribe to the videos and like them and comment, whatever. If you think I'm doing something wrong, please let me know, because if I'm honest, I've got a clue what I'm doing. So we'll go from there. Cheers, guys.